Hey guys, Brian Beeler back in the Storage Review Lab and we've got another box that's come in. We've been getting swamped lately with all sorts of goodies, but that's fine by us. It gives us more things to do and more opportunities to interact with you guys via social media. So what we've got today is a Gigabyte server. Now this box has seen some better days. It might be more tape than cardboard, but that's okay. It's what's inside that counts. This is the R282Z92, according to the side of the box. And what this is, is a 2U platform AMD dual proc system. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can work through the tape here and get at this guy inside. All right. Well, there he is. Got some heat sinks. Rail kit. And it's securely packed in the box with foam. We'll go ahead and get this out the rest of the way. We've gone ahead and popped up this Gigabyte server on our tray to take a closer look at it. Uh, just starting from the left here, we've got the standard Gigabyte uh, ID with the power and, and drive indicators. And coming over to the right side, we've got the two USB 3 ports for front access to administer the machine. Now visually, it looks identical to the other two Gigabyte servers we have in. In fact, this will be a third one of their 2U uh, design that'll make a nice little cluster if a bit mismatched. This being a dual AMD processor platform. Uh, the other one's a dual Intel CPU platform. And then the third is a single proc AMD platform. But what's really interesting about, about these drive carriers, now this is, by the way, this is uh, 24 bays of PCIe Gen 3 across the front. There are some Gen 4 accessibility options in the back in addition to two more drives. We'll look at that here in just a second. But one of the things that I like is as we pop out one of these carriers, the nice thing is that they're toolless. So as we think about putting these things to work, they just, the drives just snap in nice and easy and you're off and running. From a operating lab perspective, being able to quickly swap in drives and move things around is really easy. You know, the most of the world may not care about this sort of thing, but uh, we certainly do and it adds a lot of efficiency to our processes. Let's go ahead and spin it around the back and take a look at the PCIe Gen 4 stuff on the back side of this box. Spinning around to the back of the system, there's a couple interesting things going on here. We talked about these bays here. There are two uh, SATA SAS bays, so those would be great for boot drive or logs or something along those lines. Uh, we will see there's actually additional storage inside that we can also leverage for similar roles, just depending on, on what the needs are. We've got a pair of hot swap 1600 watt power supplies. Uh, rolling across the bottom, we've got uh, monitor access, a couple more USB ports, twin 1 gig on board, and the management port. Now down on the left side, we've got the OCP uh, card slot for MES cards, and we can see that we've got a number of PCIe expansion ports along the back. Unfortunately, because it's an NVMe server, there's a trade-off, right? And as we'll see inside, that these guys are all used in addition to the OCP slot, for managing all the NVMe drives inside. We do, however, have two PCIe Gen 4 uh, bays available that are by eight. So we'll have some opportunity because we're gonna need both of those most likely uh, for connectivity to make sure that we've got uh, good IO from the box to and from the box. Because this system will be able to generate so much computational power and storage IO, having those two available for networking is gonna be critical. So let's pop off the top of the box because that's where the fun really starts to happen. All right, so let's pop the top off here and see what's going on inside. Got the release knobs and the one little lock in the back and off with the lid. Now here we go. As mentioned, we've got 24 bays of NVMe across the front. I'm not quite sure if you can see it from this angle, but there's a little clip for each one of those drives and then a this blue teal wiring harness that runs through the sides in the middle of the system to these daughter boards in the back. 
Well, we talked a little bit about the expansion opportunities here in the back of the system. And because we've gone with an all NVMe system, we've used up a lot of those card slots for the drives. That's just a trade-off of a system like this. The Gigabyte design is very modular. So if we wanted something with a bunch of I.O. ports, the OCP card access, and all that sort of thing, we could design a system that way or even one with some NVMe and some SATA or SAS. There's just a lot of flexibility. But again, because we've gone with 24 NVMe across the front, we do have that compromise on the back side of the system. As we work front to back here, we'll pull one of the fans. We've got uh, easy to pull and replace 80 millimeter fans. And then that air gets directed under this shroud to keep the CPU and, and RAM components nice and cool. Now this is a 2U, 2CPU box. These are AMD Epic uh, Rome support. So we'll be able to drop in those CPUs. And if you remember from the very beginning, the heat sinks were in the box, so we'll attach those as well. There are 32 uh, RAM slots here, which is great. The other interesting thing is that this can be fully populated and the RAM won't downclock. So on some systems, the 3200 uh, speeds that AMD supports will drop down to 2933 if you overuse those channels. Not a problem here. So if we wanted to populate uh, this box entirely with RAM, we could and uh, wouldn't give up any of the performance capabilities. Now, one other really interesting thing here as we move to the back, of course, we've got these are the two SATA or SAS drives. So we could put a you know a RAID 1 group of uh, something cost effective, put some flash in there, a little bit of capacity. You could use it for logs. We could use it for boot. We've got a lot of options there. And those options are either further enhanced by this little guy down here. Now, here's the M.2 slot that tucks in, and it comes with this little heat spreader with the... Uh, a thermal pad on it which is kind of nice too and it's the 110 length so we'll be able to use we've got a couple Samsung's we could drop in here it's even got a, uh, a little thermal sensor here so that when the drive sits in there this dude sits on top and now we've got a really uh, nicely compliant NVMe drive uh, with the M.2 uh, up to 110 again so we've got some options here for what we put in here to use that maybe as the boot, then maybe we use this for logs or another little flash volume. Point is, is that you've got lots of choices. So what we're gonna do next is put this with its other two friends in our rack and uh, put a bunch of flash drives in it and see what we can do from a performance uh, standpoint. And we'll be back with that full review on storagereview.com in a couple weeks. Until then, we appreciate you checking out this video. Make sure to subscribe so you're in tune with everything we're doing over here at storagereview.com. And we'll be back soon with additional videos. Thanks.